slot coordination. This is the way airports try to limit congestion and delays as much as possible. So how does it work? And more importantly, what are the concepts that make removing a few flights from the schedule delays almost disappear? Let's talk aviation. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe. This really helps the channel grow and makes it easier for others to find. As an example of the enormous effects of slot coordination, we'll go back in time to the year 2000. If you were to fly to LaGuardia Airport in New York in the evening, the expected delay of your flight was more than an hour and a half. The airport was clearly used beyond its capacity. To that end, it became one of the first airports in the US to be slot restricted. Airlines couldn't just add more and more flights to the airport. But in order to reduce the flights immediately, some were forced to be cancelled. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the operators of the airport together with the FAA, organized the slot lottery. While at some points in the day, almost 90 hourly flights were scheduled, this number was decreased to 75, and airlines were forced to cancel some of their highly profitable flights. The approach worked, and delays were decreased by 80%. But how is this possible, that by removing at most 16% of the flights, delays almost disappeared? Well, to answer that question, we have to look into the mathematics behind queues. But stay with me, we're going to be just fine. First of all, how do planes form a queue at LaGuardia? Well, that's very simple. Each time an aircraft approaches the airport, it will ask for an approach clearance. If there are no planes waiting, it can fly directly to the airport and land. But if there are planes waiting, it is asked to start holding. And then, when a runway is available, generally the plane that has been holding the longest is granted permission to start its approach. If all planes arrive perfectly on schedule, the airport could operate at its theoretical capacity. But unfortunately, this is not the case. Look at your local grocery store. For each hour of the day, it's known how many customers there will be. But generally, they do not arrive at the checkout counter spaced out evenly. Sometimes, even on a rather calm day, you might be at the back of a long queue. In mathematics, this means that the planes, or customers in the grocery example, arrive according to a Poisson distribution. And luckily, we know for this distribution how long the expected delay is going to be. It's a rather simple formula actually, namely rho divided by 1 minus rho. And I hear you thinking, what is rho? Well, rho is the utilization factor, or how much of the theoretical capacity is actually used. When you look at the chart, you can see that it is far from linear. Once the number of flights reaches the theoretical capacity, the delay explodes. You may have seen this on your local highway. When only a few more cars enter, the entire flow will stop. Now that we have some mathematical background, let's go back to the LaGuardia situation. Just like many other airports, LaGuardia expanded in the year 2000. The number of flights grew by 15%, and because the airport was nearing its limits, the delays grew by a whopping 60%, making the average delay for a flight arriving at 8 in the evening 100 minutes, or more than an hour and a half. Each hour leading up to the peak in the evening, more flights arrived at LaGuardia than the airport could feasibly handle, and the queue grew hour by hour until it peaked at 8. Then, in January of 2001, the airport restricted itself to 1,205 flights, with a maximum of 75 per hour, a decrease from the 1,348 flights with a maximum of 90 per hour the year prior. While the number of flights decreased by only 10%, the delays went down by 80%, making the average delay 20 minutes, at most. But how does slot coordination work? As the name suggests, there is some coordination involved. I'll get into the reasons in a minute. Worldwide, there are over 200 slot coordinated airports, and most of them are in Europe and Asia. In the US, there are only three. JFK, LaGuardia, and Washington National Airport. Of all worldwide passengers, 43% depart from a slot-coordinated airport. The slots are allocated biannually, with a new season usually starting around the time switch related to summer and winter time, also known as daylight savings. About a year in advance, airports will declare their capacity for each hour of the day, based on runway capacity, restrictions with respect to night flights and general preferences by the airport itself. Five months before the new season starts, airlines will put in their requests for slots at each airport. The slot coordinator from IATA will receive all requests and make an initial allocation. Here's why it's important to have only one authority to do the allocation. Imagine that you're an airline and you would like to fly from JFK to Amsterdam Schiphol. Both are slot coordinated. So you will not only need a departure slot from JFK, but also an arrival slot at Amsterdam seven hours later. If there were multiple parties doing these allocations, 
it would get quite hard to make sure that each airline has matching slots for both the departure and arrival airport. To that end, IATA will do the entire process for all airports globally. After the initial allocation, the airlines will get together at the IATA slot conference, where they will iron out details and finalize the schedule for the upcoming season. While the slot system might seem quite restrictive and rigid, exceptions can be made. For example, in Europe, sports teams can get exceptions to these rules to have their charters operate one-time flights to away games. Slot coordination is a very powerful tool to prevent delays and make sure that flights are spread out over the day. And airports do not have to invest for peaks that will only happen a couple times per day. Since airlines can keep their slots if they use them properly, most legacy airlines are in favor of the system. Based on their historic preferences, they can keep operating, while new airlines have trouble getting a foot in the door. While slots usually can't be traded, exceptions have been made in the past, and slots at London Heathrow have been sold for 75 million US dollars. So, are there other ways to prevent delays? There are, of course, but these are far from ideal themselves. For example, adaptive pricing models are based on the effect of price and demand. Here, airlines have to pay additional fees if they want to operate during peaks in demand. There are no airports that use this model alone. It's usually combined with slots or other incentives to keep airlines from operating within peak hours. Did you know about the way slot coordination worked and how only a few flights can make a difference? Or do you have any other ideas to limit delays at airports? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing to Let's Talk Aviation.